Hello, and welcome back to the Four County Real Estate Show. I'm your host, Kevin Carey with Caliber Home Loans. I've got Peggy Magnanelli here again with me from Remax Results. How are you doing? We are doing our continuation series on VA buyers in this market, how to put a strong offer together. So Peggy, look, we just got done talking about appraisal waiver plus against above appraisal guarantee. So obviously one of the next contingencies that we talked about in an earlier video was contingent versus non-contingent, right? And what that means is, look, contingent upon the sale of your home, meaning, or non-contingent, meaning, do I have to sell my house first and go to closing to get those proceeds before I'm able to buy, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so from a listing agent's perspective, right. which one do I wanna see to that's best for the seller, not best for the buyer? Ah, okay, so best for the seller mm -hmm. is a non-contingent offer. Okay. You've already sold your house, and you've got you've got cash you're ready to go or you don't have to sell your house or you, you can, don't have to sell right, your house you can qualify to, carrying right. both mortgages correct okay All yeah right. they don't really want to see a house to sell or a house even a house to settle contingency mm -hmm. a house to settle contingency is a little bit easier um especially if you've gotten past the appraisal and any HOA or anything else. And just so you understand, so a pre, uh, uh, contingency based on the sale of your home and the settlement of your home is what she's referencing, which right. means that our house is on the market. We haven't gotten a contract yet. Right. Compared to, hey, our house is on the market. We are under contract. We just need it to close right. in conjunction with buying this one, right. correct? And even with that, once, I mean, there are some specific things that you have to get past. Mm -hmm before you're really a house to settle contingency. Right. So there's the, if you're in a homeowner's association, there's a homeowner's association document. Mm -hmm. There's five days there right. once you get past that. Also, once you get past the appraisal, right. which is a big one for right. everybody. So look, not everyone makes enough money to be able to go non-contingent upon the sale of their mm -hmm. home. So as a buyer, right, I've got to sell my house, but obviously I'm scared <laughs> to death because as soon as I put my house on the market, it's going to sell. Right. right, things are going so quickly. I could be homeless because it takes me so long mm -hmm. to be able to find something. Right. So, what are some of the things that a buyer seller can do in this market to allow them to take on a little bit more risk and be able to write an offer, contingent or non-contingent, when they have to sell a home? Well, frequently, what I do with most of my sellers who are in that situation is. I let that I let any buyers know that we need at least a two month rent back. Now, two months is all that most lenders will allow. Fifty nine days, just to be exact, okay. on all loans. Fifty nine days. Fifty nine okay. days to be exact. But go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so that's something that because if you go past that, then you get into a landlord tenant situation, and it's a whole big thing, and you can't do that. Right. So we do a two, no let no more than a two month rent back, which gives the that homeowner two months to go find a house, get under contract. But I always have people say, look, you know, let's make some kind of a contingency plan mm -hmm. if it goes longer. Right. You know, can you go stay with family? Can you put your stuff in storage? Right. Because it may take longer to find what you want. All right, so let's say it's been 59 days, right? Mm -hmm. And I still haven't found anything. So I don't have a place to go. Is there an option then at that point for the seller with the buyer of their house to maybe work out a rental agreement or how, is there a way to do that? Uh, not that I know of because it puts the buyer of the house into a situation where it's a rental unit mm -hmm. now and he's an investor. Gotcha. And his that affects lender the will alone. not add. Correct. Fit. Yeah, so that could constitute mortgage fraud. Right. So you have to be very, very careful Which, about that. And I'm glad you said that. That's exactly why it's 59 days across the board for having all those. So a lot of times you'll hear, oh, don't worry about it. We'll do a rent back for, for 70 days or 120 right. days. Yeah, can't do that. Can't do that, okay? So look, we know it's tough, mm -hmm. okay? And there are ways to be able to protect yourself so that you're not homeless. There's also what I hear is home of choice. Contingency. There what is, is that? a home of choice contingency, um, but it's very difficult in this market mm -hmm. because 
I mean, I guess you can get, you have your house under contract, mm -hmm. you give that, they have, the buyer has to give you time to get yourself under contract. Mm -hmm. So usually 30 to 60 days to do that. If you've gotten past the appraisal on your home, then you're okay. Right. You're past the HOA docs, you're past the appraisal, you've gotten loan commitment, you're fine. But like I said, if I'm in, a, if I'm looking at it from a listing agent point of view, I get an offer and I've got 10 offers. One of them has a house to settle contingency and the other one doesn't and they're equal. Right. They're not apples to apples. My people are going to take the ones that are non-contingent every single time. So because me, there is a little bit of risk. Right. So let me ask you a question. Can I do a house of choice for 60 days? If I don't find anything, then do a rent back for 59 days, meaning that mm -hmm. you can extend, like instead of closing in this normal market, which can be 30 days or less, right. you're really saying, hey, look, if you want to buy my house, right. and I know how tough it is for you to find something because I'm having the same problem, right. can I basically close in 120 days? Like say, look, 60 days to find a house. If I don't do a 60 day rent back and then close, is that well, a possibility? Well, you don't do a rent back and then close. You just do an extended settlement. Okay. As long as the buyer ha keeps the, the lock on their rate. Right. So the buyer may have to pay for a rate lock extension. Okay. And you know, so it depends on how much they're willing to pay for the rate lock extension. Look, the point of all this is <laughs> this, is that look, we understand the risk that it takes because everyone's afraid to sell their house mm -hmm. and not have a place to go. Right. It is a seller's market, which is what we've been telling you ever for the last 18 months, it seems like now. The point is, is that you do have some control. You do have some measure to be able to dictate when you go to close, how you go to closing with a rent back, with a house of choice contingency. There are things. So there, my whole point is, don't be afraid. There are things out there that can protect you. So right. Peggy, thanks a lot for being here. Um, Listen, if you like what you heard, uh, obviously hit the subscribe button down below. Our contact information is behind us and thank you a lot for joining us today. Thanks a lot, bye-bye.